Texting's awesome and has its place in real estate, but I'm gonna show you why texting should really be your third method of communication. So number one, I think we can all agree that content is king and video is the future. Video is the now and the future. So whenever you have the opportunity to incorporate video into your business, how can you do that? Here's some different ways. If you're, uh, if you're sending out an email newsletter to your customers on a consistent basis, have a short one to two minute video in there so that they're seeing you, right? They're feeling, they're feeling your authenticity and they're going to watch that. They're going to watch that video and they're going to be more connected with you. And now more than ever, you need to be connected with people because we have other influencers in our real estate environment like Zillow, right? So what separates you from a computer, from an algorithm? It's the human connection and being able to do that. That's another reason why you need to keep putting out video, video, video. If you're doing any kind of Facebook ads, reevaluate, see if you're wasting money or not. But if you are, just make sure that you're using video in those ads, all right? If you just get a listing, Here's another way to use video. If you just get a listing, have a video that you that you shoot. Use a bomb bomb or loom, whatever it is. But do a 60 second video, just saying, "Hey, you know what? I just wanted to thank you so much. I was just leaving the house. Uh, let you know that this is a huge uh, privilege. You know, I don't. I take this seriously when somebody trusts me to list their home. Uh, I know that this is a valuable asset, and you know, something along those lines." but do a quick 60 second video, it will go a long way. Now the second method of communication, phone calls, okay? To be a successful salesperson, which is what you are, you have to be on the phone, you have to be talking to people. Why? Well, simple reason. If you're talking to somebody, you're able to gauge where they're at. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you're just texting somebody, it's easy to say no. It's easy for them to reject you. So if you want to limit those objections, when you're on the phone, you can ask a question, wait for the response, right? So here's an example. I had a coaching client of mine. He had asked me uh, a couple weeks ago about a parent who wanted to get involved in the, uh, in the, in the um, decision. But the parent wasn't going to see the properties or anything like that. This is a buyer. And, you know, he asked me, he said, well, what should I do? I said, look, you got to talk to the guy and you have to ask him the question, what, you know, like, how do you feel about your mother uh, helping you with the decision? And you have to wait for the answer because it could go one of two ways, right? I mean, he could say, well, my mom's, uh, you know, insight is like so valuable. She's so smart. I really appreciate it. Or he can say, I wish she would mind her own business. When you start assuming what that answer is going to be, you're in big trouble. And this is why you need to talk to people on the phone. You can read what they're saying. So if he says, um, yeah, you know what? My mother is, uh, she's just overbearing and I don't want her involved. Okay, your answer is, you know what? I completely understand. I get it. What we have to do is we have to have a strategy on how we deal with that. Okay, this is now if it goes the other way, then that reply is, you know what? I totally agree. Your mom's insight is so valuable. Know what we should do? We should really get her on board to come see the properties because if she's going to be a part of the decision making process, she's going to need to see the properties. It only makes sense. So it can go one of two ways but you won't know unless you're talking to somebody on the phone. Same kind of thing if you call in your database. It's cool to text every once in a while, okay? And that definitely has its place. You know, like I'll shoot and I'll, I'll shoot a, a phone call over to somebody and I'll shoot a text message sometimes. Sometimes I'll do all three, a text, a phone, and an email. Because the more you follow up, the more business you're gonna get. Does it make sense? So if you're gonna use a text message, just make sure that it's for, you know, if you're if you're doing like lead nurture follow up or if you are just wanting to send a quick message, kind of go back and forth on a transaction or sometimes you can just, you know, throw it in your nurture sequences and just ping them, right? 
Um, and then you have the fourth method of communication, email. Email is great. Email has its place. I use it to nurture, uh, to nurture people all the time. But if I had a choice, if I wanted somebody to make a decision, let's say it's an offer, let's say it's uh, trying to list somebody's home, whatever it is, I want to talk to them. I don't want to send the email. I want to talk to them on the phone. And you should too. So this is something to think about because I know that you know, as, as, as the world changes and we have 38% of home sales in the U.S. are millennials, millennials prefer to text. I get it, right? So we do have to cater to that. Yet at the same time, everybody, I mean, it doesn't matter if you're a boomer watching this or if you're a millennial or if you're somewhere in between, probably like me, then you just need to understand where the place is and how to communicate. You need to be thinking about these things because communication is what is setting you apart from everything else. And when you lose that, you lose relevancy. Boom. All right. See ya.